going to be looking at raw inputs. Now in order to get a value from the user uh, we need to use a raw input. So imagine I want to find out someone's name. The command for raw input starts off with the word raw input with an underscore followed by an open bracket and then a question in quotation marks. So my question is what is your name? I press execute, it'll ask me what your name is, but, and then it does nothing. Now, let's say I wanted to print that name out. Well, obviously print is how you print, but the problem is I've no idea what they've entered. So the question is how on earth am I going to get what they've entered here to print out here? Well, the answer to that is really simple. We can use a variable. Okay, remember variable allow, variables allow us to store values. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so what's going to happen is it's going to evaluate this raw input, i.e. ask the user for a name. Whatever the user enters then is going to be assigned into this variable called name. If I now print out name, what should happen is if I type in Bert, it should print Bert out again. Now I could be a bit more sociable and say hello to Bert, like this. And obviously I've been using Bert, but I could use any name. So I could type in Fred, hello Fred, Sally, hello Sally. And I could use it to ask uh, more than one question. So let's say I want to know the person's hobby. I need a brand new um, variable to store the results in. I use raw input again and I need a different question this time. So what is your hobby? Not hobby, hobby. And then I can do something with it. You like hobby. So it's going to ask the two questions first. So the name, what is your name, and then the hobby, then it's going to print out uh, the person's name and the hobby. So let's try that. Fred likes football. So as you can see it prints it out. Raw input is a great way of getting information in and we can do the same for numbers. Raw input. How old are you? Now there is a slight problem with this which I'll explain uh, in a second, but I'm just going to print this out. Like this. So it should now, let me type in Fred, football, age, 34. Yeah, everything seems to be working fine. There's one problem though. Imagine I want to do this. Your age doubled. And then obviously to double someone's age, you times it by two. Now watch what happens. I type in the name, Fred, type in football, age, 10, and it should print out 20, shouldn't it? Because 10 times two is 20. But it actually prints out 1010. Now that's blatantly wrong. But let's explain what actually Python is doing. Raw input always returns text. Now Python's not clever enough to know that that should be a number. It will just accept whatever you type in as text. And if you remember, the multiplier sign, when you apply it to text, just simply repeats it more than once. So if I put in the three there, and I just quickly do that thing again, so Fred, football, and how old are you, 10, it's now going to print out 10, 10, 10. So it's basically just taken the text 10 and repeated it three times. So the question is how do I actually get it to 
treat it as a number? Well, the answer is to convert it into a number. And I can do that using this casting int. Now, to cast, what a cast does is it will, it will take uh, one data type, in this case text, and turn it into a different data type, in this case numbers. The int surrounds the whole of the raw inputs with an open bracket before the raw inputs and a closed bracket afterwards. Think of it a bit like a sandwich. The filling, in this case, is the raw inputs, and the bread, in this case, is the int. So the int will take whatever the filling is, which in this case is how old are you, the raw inputs, turn that string into a number and then store that number its age. And if I run this this time, so what's your name, Fred? What's your foot, uh, hobby, football? How's your, how old are you, 10? This time it prints out 20. Now, obviously, there's a problem with that, which I'll show you. What's your name? What's your hobby football? How old are you? If I type in text, it gives me an error. Now later on we'll look at how to deal with these errors, um, but for now um, we'll just assume that the user knows what they're doing and won't type in anything wrong. Okay, Not a great way of going about it, but we will generally look at validation in a later lesson.